Okay, so I'm back at my little uh, viewpoint on the stream. You can see it's a wet day and um, when I looked out the window this morning I saw all the low cloud and I thought yesterday is going to be a, a good day for me making this atmospheric image from, from the previous video and uh, I might be wrong. Um, I was hoping, hopefully you can see behind me there, I was, I was hoping I'd get this um, mist in or cloud in the in the direct foreground so we can separate out the trees and have a bit of atmosphere to the scene but it looks like it's just the worst type of cloud it's literally like walking into a, a shower it, it's quite invigorating to be honest but um not conducive to the old photography uh, i've brought my umbrella i've got my wellies and my oh, full waterproof so i'm i'm comfortable enough um and the umbrella's mainly to keep the camera um dry when i set up uh, so i'm definitely going to take some shots it's uh i don't want to come to all this effort and not go away with anything but again what I, what i will say is you know you come in these conditions and it does give it a, a different meaning you know it's like there's trees in the distance what are barely visible and they're really quite atmospheric i mean if uh the they'd be good for long lens shots today because you can just pick out these kind of ghostly figures of trees but unfortunately we haven't got the, um, the the mist or the cloud just in that little portion of what I want. I might hang around for a bit and see what I can uh, see if anything changes because it is coming up and down. I mean that the place behind me there is is actually lower than I am now and that is absolutely covered in that that's perfect over there. I just wish that would blow into to this little section here. But like I say, I think I think there's a lot of potential with this scene, and uh, you know I'm I'm going to I'm determined to make something of it off it and um you know persistence it's the biggest friend of the landscape photographer and you know it's just too easy to look out the window today and think do you know what i can do something else inside today but no i'm i'm up for it and uh, I, you know i want to i want to make the most of it while i'm able to so right i'm just gonna have a wander around for a bit and we'll uh, we'll see how it goes but i am gonna set up so i'll catch up with you in a sec and uh, we'll talk through what might happen next So this is my first image from the shoot and um, whilst I was waiting for the weather to improve in the location I wanted to I thought I'll um, I'll use a bit of time to make make a version of this image from the previous shoot up here and I'm actually really delighted with this image I think it's um, I think it's a very appealing image to me very atmospheric and autumnal in some ways um, I've tinted the image so it's um, it's a little bit more colourful or autumnal palette, if you will, but uh, overall very happy with it. It's um, You can see how thick the mist is on the left-hand side of the image there. There's, um, it's barely visible, it's the outline of the fells and the trees themselves, but I think that adds something quite interesting to the image. So yeah, overall pleased with that. I think I'll, um, I'll give that some more consideration and I might consider offering that as... Um, I'll give that image some more consideration. I think I might consider offering that as a print and the inclusion in my upcoming book, Capture Lakeland Volume 3. So uh, overall, very pleased with how the shoot started.
So I've just shot these five trees here, what you can see up on the bank behind me, and uh, they're looking all right. I mean, you know, let's not try and uh, sugarcoat it. It's a grim looking day. And uh, the reason I'm here is not to shoot these five, it's to shoot the little ravine down there, but it looks like the mist is in the wrong place at the minute. It's rather behind me as opposed to in front of me down onto my scene. So again, a bit like uh, my previous video, how long do you wait? I can't see me waiting here a couple of hours to uh, to get this, but um, I'll give it a shot and see how long I can last. It's uh, I'm geared up for it, so I'm not going to become too uncomfortable, hopefully. So yeah, it's uh, the forecast men to get out a bit this afternoon, so if I do wait around for a bit, it might it might change, the sun might break through, but I'm, uh, I'm not hopeful for that just at the moment. It will do eventually, because it can't start this forever. But it's how long you can last as a person, I think, is the uh, is the challenge here. So yeah, okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll persevere and uh, see you in a sec. Okay, so I would say things are improving in my favour. They're actually getting worse, but that's that's probably good for me. I'll tell you the other thing I'm noticing as well is the uh, the rain is sticking to the top of these long the long grasses, and they all look like they've got white tips on, but it's actually uh, raindrops in the in the distance. I've also got um, the rain's coming from behind, so the lens of your eyes are getting wet, but my camera's eye won't be, so um, that should help me keep the uh, the lens clean. But right, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to remove my high-tech weather protection system. Okay, so this is the um, my first shot from the uh, the viewpoint down the wall and the stream. Um, I'm quite pleased with the image. It's it's um, you know taking the learning from the previous shoot. Uh, I went straight to this viewpoint and I'm, I set up and made the image. And yeah, I really like it. I think it improves upon. Um, my last visit because obviously we've got the mist in the background so you can't see through um, through that down to the fells and the buildings below so it's uh, yeah it's very atmospheric and um, pretty pleased for my first shoot of the day there on this specific location I mean this is this image is the whole reason of why I was coming up here so to uh, to get the conditions how I wanted them is a is a real uh, a real plus so very pleased with how this is going so far absolutely fantastic look at this it's uh it's paid off my uh my persistence and uh i'm so delighted that uh, i've managed to make it up here today because that is uh exactly what i was hoping for the mist has now come into the immediate foreground and we've now got the, the bank of ferns on the side of now uh, a bit more atmospheric as the trees are silhouetted in the background so really delighted with uh with how this has turned out it's uh, it couldn't be better and the rain is actually coming diagonally down towards me so i'm managing to keep uh, the lens dry as well so that's a huge bonus because it can be quite difficult trying to keep on top of everything but yeah so i've just been shooting away here in uh, various well just this one one shot really but various settings so we'll run through the images and see how we go but absolutely delighted it's uh, it's such a such a good feeling when you persevere towards something and uh, you know, we have so many failures as landscape photographers, don't we? You know, the, the near misses and the what ifs. But, you know, wh when it comes together, it's fantastic. Especially when you have a premeditated idea like this, you know, and uh, and things work out. It's, it is really rewarding. So what a great start to the day. Okay, so a little bit of time has gone by since my last shot. And as you can see there, the, uh, the mist is thickening up a bit and uh, it's coming in towards where I am, making the... Uh, the scene a bit more atmospheric in terms of its look and its feel and uh, again same composition just weighted out really for um for like i say for the mist to thicken up a bit and, and add a bit more drama to that background i really love how those trees are um silhouetted especially how on the left hand side you've got the two um pine trees if if, if that's what they are larch trees where one is a lot more muted than the other in the distance you can see there that there's cl there's a clear separation between the two and that's that's what i love about these misty shots it gives you that them layers and that depth instead of it all being rather flat 
So yeah, very pleased with that, very pleased with the composition like we touched on in the last video where we've got the lines coming down all leading to that central point uh, and obviously the drama of the wall falling down. I think uh, I, I think that's a really strong image. You know, when, when I stop and look at that, um, I can talk for a long time about that image because I feel very strongly about it. There's a lot of different textures and different lines going along with it and... Um, yeah, very, very pleased with uh, with how that's come out. I think I'll certainly be offering that as a as a framed print and also uh, considering its inclusion in my upcoming book, Capture Lakeland Volume 3. So, um, yeah, really worthwhile f for that image alone, really. I often like to take various, um, various takes on the same composition. Uh, and what I really mean by that is different orientation so we've this is obviously a landscape uh, orientation shot of the previous image and again you know i, I can't you know it's a but it's, it's very difficult reviewing your own images you know you don't want to come across as arrogant or as you know cocky or whatever you want to say but that's a really nice image to me I, i'm very pleased with with how that image has come out i'm very proud of it i think you know, we've got all these triangles of, of information. You know, you've got the, on your right, you've got your grass bank, you've got your, your wall, you've got your green strip, your reeds, your bracken, and then you've, you're up into the, the mist there. And then obviously everything's pulling your eye into the central part where we've got these different layers of different species of trees. And again, just, it's, it's a pleasure to look at that image. I'm, I'm really into it. And I, and I think I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know if it's because I've worked really hard to get it or whether it's because I, I found it ages ago and then I've thought, you know, I'm going to come back there in, in different conditions. Or if it's because I really worked to find it, you know, because if you watch my first video, I didn't necessarily find that specific composition. I thought the wider perspective from further up the, the, the bank was the best way. And only with working that scene, you know, for an hour or two, did I come across this specific composition, if you will, and, and I'm just delighted with it. So it's, yeah, there's been some effort gone into it, as we've seen, but overall, I just think aesthetically, it, it's a really nice image and it, it works very well for me. It's, it's right up my street, that one. Okay, so to follow on from the point I made a, a few moments ago about experimenting with different orientations of images, different compositions, this is a wider take on the scene. This is a two shot stitched panorama. It might even be a three shot actually. Um, so all these images were made with the same lens, my 45 millimeter lens, but just by stitching a, a couple or two or three together, you can obviously transform the scene there and make it into a much wider scene. Uh, but the theme continues, doesn't it? You know, we, I talk about lines and depth and layers and portions of image uh, portions of the image will all sit together. So if you if you just look at that image there, what's the first thing you see? The thing I see is the line running from the bottom left uh, to the top right, and it's a perfect line running right through the scene. It splits it diagonally in half, doesn't it? So we've got our reeds and our wall and our grass bank below it, and then above it we've got the the ferns and the the mist and the trees in the center. And, and again, you've then got the wall pulling you in from the bottom right hand corner. And the top of the um, the top of the bank of ferns from the top right hand uh, top left hand corner pulling us down to that central point again, and then the the silhouetted point in the distance. Re really, again, really strong for for me. I just find that really appealing. I find that very strong. If if I could question anything about that image, it's the inclusion of the bottom half of that tree on the top left corner and whether or not that scene would be better without that. I think when I tried to crop the image, though, it's, um, if I crop out that tree, I lose the space around all the other elements. So, for example, on the top right-hand corner where the uh, the verge sits just below the, the top line of the image, I think that works well having a bit of space around it. So it's um, it doesn't distract overly. I think, I think the thing my eye goes to, first of all, on that image is the the reeds in the in the left bottom corner and and that big patch of yellow um, and then I, I pick up the line of the ferns and I just get taken straight into the center either there or the hole in the wall and it's uh, I just love how it all joins together uh, and anyone would think I've actually thought about that image which is uh, 
yeah, it's not an accident. You know, it's been really enjoyable putting that together. If you take anything away from this video, it's never give up. Always keep keep trying, and there's never any such thing as bad weather. Just uh, get the right gear on, make yourself comfortable, and get out there. So one of the things I'm finding helpful with uh, today's shoot is um, the knowledge I've got from my first shoot here which was in my last video from this location and I'm now finding that I'm able to put into practice some of the things I noticed through um, analysing those images in the image review we did and it's quite interesting how you can bring your memories back to that and quickly work the scene uh, rather than seeing it for the first time and it's not something I do that often but it's it's benefiting me today I would think and I'm now sort of trying to develop the scene a little bit as well and seeing if I can come up with further ideas but it's uh, it's just getting worse the weather well better for me it's absolutely fantastic look at it it's uh, I couldn't ask for better conditions for, for the image I want you know and I think having that initial vision is really uh, really kind of exciting me really it's uh, especially when you can realize it like this it can often take a long while but this is only within the space of two or three days so long may the rubbish weather continue so i'm just getting down low here with the uh, the grass with the water droplets on and just giving some thought to see if there's a an image to be had from here and i think there is you know so I might just do a quick experiment and set myself up and down here. It'll be nice with a, a very shallow depth of field, won't it? Just to bring out all this, um, this water on the grass. Okay, so for these series of images, I wanted to create something of a different perspective. Um, rather than just standing in the same place for, for a couple of hours, I wanted to try and get a bit lower down and explore more of this foreground feature of the, the stream, what you can see on the left-hand side there and these reeds. I think I mentioned in the video, you can see all these white little um, droplets of water on the on the top of the grasses there. What it, it made it look like they were they were all glowing with big white tips of the uh, the the grass there. It was obviously reflecting the the sky and uh, the surrounding area, and it was really quite appealing. So um, I experimented with a few low shots there, and I focused on. Um, I, I actually went to a really large aperture, well f4 is the largest aperture on my 45mm lens and I focused in quite uh, close to the foreground and I wanted to emphasise these white water droplets and blur the background see how that would look from more of an artistic shot but yeah just um, breaking the time up really and explore, you know, experimenting I think rather than just get the one image and head back I wanted to, uh, I was in the zone, you know, I was in the, I was in the mode for it and uh, I really enjoyed making these images. I think they're quite interesting in their own right. Okay, so it's about an hour after I last spoke to you and I'm still here persevering away with this uh, wonderful 3D puzzle in front of us. It's been uh, it's been a fantastic morning. I've got um I've got some new images as well, new compositions where I had a look around and once I got my my first, or well, the original idea, I uh, explored a few others from the different side of the stream. So I'll, ru I'll run through those images with you in this video and uh, and we'll see where we go from there. It's been really enjoyable actually. I mean, uh, I'm going to take it on board for future shoots now. How, uh, you know, don't let the weather hold you back. There's always something out there. Okay, so for my final selection of images from today, um, again, I just remade some of the original composition so we've got our landscape orientation shot there with the the leading lines coming down from the left and right hand sides and the bottom corners and the the right corner um all pulling us into the central section of the the misty trees and the mist was really thick at this point it was uh, it was really quite uh, heavy you know and it, it did add a lot of atmosphere to uh, to the image i was making um I was doing some experiments with the height of the camera as well just to see the difference between if I could get the line of the bank on the right hand side to line up with the top of the wall so that all flowed and I think I've managed that there I think when you look at you look at the wall from its central position and follow it out um, towards towards your eye if you will it, it does kind of verge off and then and then come up on its own tangent angle if you will so 
Yeah, I'm very pleased with that. Again, I just, I'm really drawn to that image. I think it's a very strong image. Okay, and a, a portrait orientation image this time. Now I'd moved a little bit close to the wall and I wanted to really emphasize the, the, the stones what have fallen out of the wall and also these ferns in the foreground. Uh, maintaining my lines and the, the concept of the original image which is all leading us to that central point and again just uh, really quite, I find that really appealing as an image you know I think it could be uh, it's worthy of, of a print that one definitely I, I think it's it's one of those I think I mentioned in the original video it's a very obscure scene it could be anywhere you know and you, you do see paintings of things like this with from the countryside you know just little sections of images what really have a lot of um, character about them and, and that image is, is a characterful image to me. I'm, I'm really proud of that image. So another panoramic uh, image this time but from the other side of the, the boggy little stream there. So I waded through that bit of a, a stream with the reeds there and I, uh, I set my camera up so I could make um, a much wider perspective. I still wanted to include the uh, the fallen down wall, uh, which I've obviously done there on the right hand side, um, it looks to have fallen down more towards the centre as well, which I, I didn't see that from my other perspective. But again, I'm, to carry on the theme of the lines and the leadings and uh, where the eyes being pulled into, you know, there's a lot of everything in that image is leading to that central point where those um, where those trees are nicely silhouetted with the various amounts of depth. So the the ridge line of the the hills on the right and and the left in the in the background in the mist there and then we've got the wall um, the reeds and then the the green grassy path below the ferns there so again I'm I'm really pleased with that image really pleased with how it's come out I think um, I think the concept of of finding a, an image what you find appealing. Uh, in this particular case, it's the the story of the the trees in the centre and all the elements pulling into it, and then experimenting with various compositions. It's really been quite a rewarding process for me here, and uh, uh, all these images I'm really pleased with. So that's um, that's a huge bonus for me. Very enjoyable process in first of all seeing the image and then working the scene to uh, to try and improve and find a new alternative perspective. Okay, so this is one of my low down alternative perspective shots. And again, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have thought of this the first time I went there. I think it was only because I, I stood around for two or three hours that I had, um, you know, I, I had the time and the inclination to look. It was, you know, it was, it was so easy just to take the image and then go. But by persevering and, uh, and trying alternative angles, I think, other strong images have come out and and this is one of them you know I think again it's on the same concept of the lines leading us into that central scene but by mixing up the foreground with our little stream there on the left hand side and the reeds and uh, the bracken on the on the right it's uh, it's it's a really it's an image I'm really pleased with. I'm actually struggling to find or to choose a favorite image from this shoot because I think um, I think they're all really quite strong in their own right. I mean, again, if I could take anything away from this image, it would be those little branches on the top left-hand corner. I could perhaps crop them out, but like I said, I think if I do that, I'm, I'm then going to not give in the element, like the stream and how that branches off to the left, enough breathing space to the to the left of it. So I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I think there's enough stronger elements within other areas of the image for that not to be a, a problem from a focus perspective but you know that I guess that's the type of micro detail I go into when analyzing a composition like this but uh, you know to say I'm uh, I'm pleased with it is an understatement I am I'm delighted with how these images have turned out okay so we've got a portrait version of that same scene as well now and uh, I took this because I wanted to emphasize the stream uh, it's quite difficult to see the stream when you stood on the bank. Uh, it seems to just be um, a mishmash flowing between the, the reeds, if you will. So I actually stood in the stream and or over it, and I made sure it was in the centre of the image so we could definitely see that there. Um, and I, I love how that image, um, the stream curves into the scene, and then as it curves, it kind of picks up with the bank of ferns, which then curve a back round and meet with the wall, and then we've got our trees. So... Again, you know, focusing on all these 
lines and elements and where it takes the eyes uh, has been really rewarding. I am uh, I'm very much attracted to, to, to that image as I am to the to the images as, as a group really. I think um, I think there's something really quite strong about that. I mean I do love a portrait image as well. I think a portrait image is, is my favourite type of image overall, the aspect ratios. Uh, I think you get to see and feel more of the environment because you can obviously you can feel like you can touch the foreground and you can look and grab hold of something. It anchors the image. And spe specifically when we've got that stream leading us into it as well. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted with that image. Really, really strong. And that'll definitely be a print and have uh, be considered for my upcoming book, certainly. Okay, a uh, retake on the, the original, really, but just stepping a little bit further back from the fallen down wall now. And I wanted to include... Uh, the ferns are around here on the right hand side as I go past this they disappear and I, I really like these ferns especially when they're in the transition from you know the summer spring and summer greens into the golden browns and uh, of autumn before they, they, they die out completely and uh, I wanted to try and include those in the scene as well so I've obviously I, I composed this image so we get that nice big clump of ferns on the bottom right hand corner and then our wall comes out of that and all the all the elements I've mentioned previously about the stream and the lines all work. So yeah, re again, really quite pleased with that. I think it's probably maybe not as strong as some of the other images, but still, in, if you looked at that in isolation without seeing the others, I, th I I don't think you'd complain about. Well, I wouldn't complain about that image. I think it's quite a quite a strong image. Okay, so back to my favoured portrait orientation, and this is a retake of a, an image I made. Last time, uh, if you saw the previous video, I focused on this little fern in the foreground there. Um, and if you just look, take a look at that fern for a moment, you can see there it's in its transition period from green to uh, golden, and then it'll obviously go brown. And I noticed it was it was in that halfway position, so I thought, you know, that, that makes quite a nice foreground element there. So I'm, I'm really pleased I included that. If I have any regret about that image, it's not actually getting a bit lower to the ground and focusing more. I, I've, I actually really regret not doing that in hindsight. I think I should have got a lot closer to um, to the fern. I think I probably did look at it in the shoot, but uh, by doing so, I think you lose the relationship between all the other lines going on in the image. So for example, the wall with its bank above it and then the ferns and, and things. It, you know, the height of an image is quite important when you're coming to given its relationship between things. So if I'd have got lower, I would have compressed uh, the space between the fern and the wall, for example, and would it have worked otherwise? Um, it would have been nice to try it to prove myself right, but I think I probably did look at it in reality and, and discount it. But in hindsight now, I wish I could see it again. Um, so it would it would be nice to see it again if, if I had have taken the image. But, you know, I'm not complaining about that strong image really pleased with it I think it's um, again I, th I think it works it's a beautiful atmospheric autumnal image to me okay well thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon all the best for now bye bye